Okay, so here we go. We're doing worst plant fails video. Yeah, there's a lot to share. When you have upwards of 200 plants, like plant fails are going to happen. So basically this video is gonna be sharing some of the challenges I've experienced, some of the mistakes that I've made recently. And I have actually been really fortunate. My plants are loving their new plant room and all of the new things that I'm doing for them. So I have been experiencing a lot of, you know, positive stuff, it, lots of wonderful new growth. However, along with all the good stuff comes a lot of like, you know, learning lessons is what we're gonna call them as well. You know, fails, fine, what have you. I'm also going to share a tour of, you know, some of the plants that I'm dealing with that are struggling right now and some of the mistakes that I've made with those. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and that, you know, if, if anything, it just makes you feel more comfortable in knowing that don't feel bad. We all make mistakes. We all have plant fails. And uh, the wonderful thing about this channel is, is that we can share it with each other and have a good laugh because, you know, at the end of the day, you can't take it all so seriously. We all get to share our plant experiences with each other. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. This is a plant community for crazy plant people. And if that brings a smile to your face and you're a crazy plant person like the rest of us, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. I do post about twice a week. And if you like my YouTube channel, you will love my Instagram because I post on there every single day on my story at least. So these are not in any particular order. I am just going to jump into it. So number one is basically killing my most expensive plant I've ever purchased. I have a history of spraying things on my plants thinking they are something and they are actually something else. This happened a long time ago when I sprayed carpet cleaner on my plants. I did it again. The Gloriosum was my number one wishlist plant for a long long time. I decided to get a huge one that I found at Cactus Club um, that came available. Now to this day it is still the most expensive plant I have ever purchased. So being as obsessed as I am with this plant every single day after I purchased it, I was looking at the leaves. I thought I saw some pests on there. So I went out and bought a pesticide, kind of in a complete panic. And it said spray ready on the bottle, but I, it wouldn't spray when I brought it home to spray it. I took the lid off of it, filled it up in a spray bottle and proceeded to spray my Gloriosum like saturated. I saturated the leaves, I saturated the soil. I also saturated and sprayed my Mickey Mouse taro. And a few days later I noticed, oh my gosh, my leaves are completely cooked, completely brown, beautiful glorioso. I immediately went back to look at the bottle and it was spray ready for a hose. And that is why it would not spray because it needed to be hooked up to a hose in order to be sprayed properly. I immediately went to my Glorious Mickey Mouse Tarot, sprayed them down with water, repotted them. But at this point, to be honest, the damage was done. It managed to make it. It's fortunately, it is a gloriosum, so it survived. Barely. I mean, I have had to baby the heck out of this plant since then. A lot of damage was done from the concentration. Um, I had to cut off a lot of the leaves. This is the best one. It's still struggling. And I was in such a state about it. I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't share it with you guys. I couldn't tell anybody because I was just like completely certain that I had killed it. And I was just like, okay, it's done. And then one day I noticed new growth happening and I was like, so, so relieved. So even though it was a total, total plant fail, cannot be denied, at least it turned out okay in the end because literally this is my most expensive plant, like I said, to this day. This is new growth. And then it has another new leaf coming out, new growth. So it's a plant fail that turned out okay in the end. And my Mickey Mouse Taro is barely, barely holding on. The second it gets warm enough, I am taking that thing outside. But I will say this, neither of them have had a single pest on them since I did that. So, so continuing on with number two. Now this one is kind of continuing along the line of pest prevention. It's specifically about beneficial insects, which I've been experimenting with over the last month, month and a half. And I have all sorts of helpful information and tips to give you guys. And, uh, maybe I've done some of the legwork for you. So I was at Cactus Club a while ago and I noticed they had some ladybugs around in their store and I was immediately inspired and a common sense person might be like, hey, Ashley, maybe you don't release uh, ladybugs in your house. Well, 
in all fairness, the price is incredible. I immediately went home, went on Amazon, ordered a bunch of ladybugs, they were delivered, and I proceeded to release them in my plant room. And I'm really glad that I only released them in my plant room. And I quickly realized like ben beneficial insects are a very helpful pest prevention, but maybe ladybugs weren't the great best thing to have like in my house. When I get into something, it's like 100%. I'm like, I just go for it. So I'm like, oh, I freaking love this, you know, beneficial insect pest prevention. I'm gonna order some, you know, some green lace wings too and they can you know eat all the freaking i don't know how many pests i thought i had in here but okay there's different options you can do eggs i order larvae it's about 50 dollars because you have to have them overnight shipped so i had them shipped i sprinkled the larvae all over my plants that 50 dollars quickly just evaporated in front of my eyes because all my ladybugs proceeded to eat my green lacewing larvae. That was some very expensive ladybug food. So the pros of ladybugs are, you know, they're inexpensive, they eat all your pests, but some of the cons are they fly around everywhere. They definitely like climb up the walls. They're making little ladybug babies all the time with each other, all over the room. Um, I'm, they literally like, they'll zoom around everywhere. When they die, it's so sad. Their little ladybug carcasses are all over the room. I'm constantly having a vacuum. Green lace wings, you probably won't ever see them again. Once you put them on your plant, like, that's all you have to deal with. Like, you can give them some water and bug food and stuff like that, but you're not gonna have to like, you're not living in a green lacewing house. When you have ladybugs in your house, you're living in a ladybug house. I mean, it's their house, I'm just living in it. It's their plant room at this point. I just come in and visit. So number three, a lot of you guys know that astrophytum are like my tippy top favorite types of plants. Uh, for those of you that don't know, astrophytum are awesome. They're a type of cacti. They come in all different shapes, sizes. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful little pieces of art. They're very, very hard to find and they take years and years and years to grow to any kind of size. I thought, you know, I'm just gonna give it a shot and buy some seeds and grow some astrophytum of my own, even if it takes, you know, however many years. So I purchased some seeds from Etsy. They were crushing life and I grew them for about a year. You know, I was so proud of my progress. They were looking amazing. You, they were just to the point where they were starting to get little dots and spines on them. And in my move, I had so many, you know, 100 plants to keep track of that I set them down somewhere, totally forgot about them, and they all died. I'm gonna order some more astrophytum seeds and grow some more because I love them. And even though it will take, you know, five years for them to get any kind of size. I don't care, I'm gonna do it again. All right guys, so plant fail number four. At this point, I think my love affair with alocasia needs to take a little break. I don't think I'm gonna be buying alocasia for a while anymore and I freaking hate to say it. They're still my favorite, the way they look is amazing. I'm obsessed with all of them. Um, but I have to say literally every single alocasia I've ever had, except for my Maharani, has acquired some sort of pests and died. That's one of the ways that I've learned so much about pests is from dealing with my alocasia. And I have to say, I'm so jealous of people that can have alocasia and, and not have any issues with them. Tiny Dancer, I've had two of them and killed both. My Alocasia Bambino has spider mites right now. My variegated one, it was on the struggle bus from the second it got here. I ordered it online and it just struggled. I'm here holding it like there's actually anything here, but um, I'm hoping it's just gone dormant and that it will come back because it's such an amazingly beautiful plant. Okay, so that's my plant fail number four are just basically Alocasias in general are just one big, if we could just have like plant failure written above my head with Alocasia, and it's such a shame because I love them so much. They're so beautiful. If, if you're someone who can have alocasia and handle them, I'm so jealous of you. Well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, guys, so for plant fail number five, I'm going to be basically giving you a tour of some of my plants that are struggling. Now, I have a lot of plants that are doing awesome. They're freaking showing tons of new growth, but of course I have the plants that are struggling that I have either overwatered or underwatered or who knows what's going on with them. So that's what I'm gonna share with you now. Um, let's get going on the tour. First off, I'll start off with this beautiful, beautiful escargot begonia I got from Pikes. And how beautiful is this plant? It is, uh, it's absolutely massive it actually is so mature that it's double spiral leaves which i've never seen that before i've only ever seen that on this plant um but it is struggling a little bit uh so what i what i think i'm gonna do i, I think i've been underwatering it is i'm gonna trim off all the ones that are dying and just kind of see if there's some it looks like there is new growth happening so uh so i'm just gonna need to get on top of it but um 
yeah, this is definitely one of my like struggle bus plants right now. Perus are literally like the easiest plant. However, for some reason, I have a hard time with Peru. Um, it is putting out new growth, but like the old leaves are struggling. Maybe that's, you know, that's pretty common with a lot of plants. But uh, I just seem to have not the best experience with Perus. Like this is my other one and it just not, no bueno. You know, that's no bueno. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, calatheas, ooh, gosh, the calathea dilemma where they're so awesome and every, like, I buy them, but then, you know, they do the brown leaves and they struggle, so, um, keep my fingers crossed on that one, ooh, yeah, this one's pretty much a dunner. <laughs> this was a Worsh, Worshezi, eye. Such a beautiful plant. This is all that is left of this guy. I'm hoping he makes a comeback. That's what makes me appreciate my Zebrina so much because it just thrives and doesn't need anything. It's the only Calathea I have that uh, that's happy. This variegated aluminum plant always put off, like, sorry, I'm stirring of hearts. Um, has always done really, really well for me, but I accidentally left it in a water, in water when I was bottom watering it in a cash pot and I forgot about it and it sat in that water for a few days and uh, the, all the leaves started turning. So um, it's trying, trying, trying to make a comeback. Like, look how beautiful that leaf is. I don't know why this isn't more popular because um, the leaves are just so stunning on it. But yeah, that was a fail on my part for sure. So I have one orchid. It's so beautiful when it blooms. It's only bloomed one time ever and they all died pretty quickly. So I don't know if you'd clarify that as a fail or not, but uh, I'm pretty sure I have to give it some sort of something to get it to bloom again. And I'm not sure what that is. So maybe you guys can help me out with that because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna do anything for me unless I change something up or do something special for it. I don't know. So everything in my Ikea cabinet is doing pretty well. My one, you know, sort of failure is my Begonia Julau. It had all sorts of wonderful new growth on it. It's a beautiful, beautiful Begonia. I mean, look at that leaf. Um, but I just can't seem to stay on top of it. It really needs to be in like a cloche or something. So it is down to its last leaf, guys. Oh my gosh. So I have been staying on top of it, making sure it's it gets enough humidity. It wants to put out new growth, um, but every time it tries, I'm failing at it. So, yeah. Okay, this one hurts. This is my Adansonii Pope. He's miserable. He was such a happy guy for so long, and uh, and now this is what we're what we're working with. He has new growth happening but even the new growth isn't like super super excited about life so yeah poor guy i can't really figure out what he needs differently he does get a fair amount of light i think i'll just chop him up and maybe propagate him um but yeah that's never a good That is never a good, good sign. Here we have a variegated African violet. Not going to say much about it other than it could definitely, you know, be doing better. But look how cute that little pot is. Yeah, some yellowing leaves, but for the most part doing okay. These two guys are just, just alive enough to give me a little bit of hope but just dead enough to give me a little bit of heartache and worry. So over here's my pink lady peperomia, which as you guys know, used to be massive and beautiful. All of a sudden one day decided to kind of just die on me. Um, it was making a comeback and then with the move it struggled. So it is putting out a little bit of new growth, but yeah, just kind of keeping my fingers crossed on that one. And then this is my variegated string of pearls. Also very struggly. So, you know, just wanted to show you guys, we all struggle. That's my new Adam Sonia. It, it already was struggling when I got it, but yeah. 
Oh my gosh, I almost forgot this one. I am in such a battle with this Curtisii. It is love and life, and then it hates life, and then it loves life again. Um, it's so beautiful. It's making a comeback, but this one has been tricky. For a Hoya, this one is very, very tricky, but the leaves are so beautiful and delicate and fragile. Uh, I didn't want to give up on it, and I'm glad I didn't because it's a really pretty, pretty one. Everyone always shows their Pilea peperomioides looking so good, and mine is just... <laughs> I've moved it in here, so it is doing better now, but uh, yeah, it's putting out a tiny bit of new growth. I'm like optimistic, I guess, but still like, you know, and yeah, not, not super winning on this one. My Calathea orbifolia, oh, again, is struggling. It's not putting out any new growth. You know, it is in my bathroom, so maybe it'll make a comeback. I do water it with distilled water, and it still does this stuff to me. And I don't let it dry out. Like, the leaves are a nice size. It has grown a lot, but it's just, it's just not very pretty. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem super happy to me. But again... I do everything that I think it wants, and uh, this Mikan's over here struggling. I don't know what to, quite what to, oh my gosh, ignore that hair there. But um, yeah, you know, such, such a beautiful Mikan's. I think it was getting too much sunlight over by the window, so I just moved it over here. Um, and it does have like new growth and stuff that's happening, so uh, I think it'll make a, make a nice little comeback. Last up is my super sad Monstera. I'm so sad for it. It just needs to be repotted desperately. It's always thirsty, like no matter how much I water it. Um, so I'm, I think I'm gonna repot it this week. <sighs> hey babe, just ran over here, wanted to say, oh, bless you. And say hi to everybody. Okay, love you. Yeah, good girl. Claire, not so much. The girl. Yeah. This one's a bit of a fail as well. Once I repot it, it should come back to life and it won't be so much of a fail. Um, you know, with Monstera, it should make a comeback and it, it is trying to put out new growth. So I'm hopeful on this one. It is such a beautiful plant. I need to, I was waiting until after winter time, but I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Okay, last up is this African violet. Um, it definitely has something going on. I think it's some sort of virus. So I have it away from all my other plants. And it's the one I got that's like puts out these beautiful, beautiful white and purple leaves. Um, and it's in like, <laughs> it's in my favorite whale pot, but... Yeah, I had to trim all the buds back. And as you can see, like the leaves are struggling a little bit. So I don't think there's anything I can really do about that one. Okay guys, so those are my top plant fails, my top plant fail stories that I have right now. Um, I'm sure I'll do an update, you know, down the road in the next few months. Um, if you have any plant fail stories that you wanna share, please leave them in the comments below. I always love to see your feedback. And if you liked this video, I hope you did, please subscribe. Um, I do try to post once or twice a week. And like I said, if you like this channel, you will love my Instagram because I post on there pretty much every single day planty stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic rest of the day. You you will definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.